Hello everyone, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. In today's video, we're going to trap a prairie falcon with a doe gaza net. This I have to preface with, as I do with all of my trapping videos. Don't ever go trapping. Do not use the information in this video without first checking your local laws. Most parts of the world require a falconry license or other permitting in order to trap a bird of prey. So you need to be aware of that and need to know what the laws are and be sure to follow them. This, this type of trapping we're going to do today is sort of a fun one. Prairie falcons are uh, one of the largest falcons in North America. And we went out today trying to trap a prairie falcon for use in falconry. But this tra this trapping technique using this net system is used by many other people. It's, it's very helpful for biologists. It's used by bird banders such as groups like Hawkwatch International that trap and band migrating birds and document them. It's also good for falconers, obviously. And also groups such as zoos and aviaries that uh, sometimes a bird in their flight show will fly off and needs to be recovered if it gets scared off by other wild birds. So I hope that seeing this is a useful thing. The Dogaza net is not just a static net that a bird gets tangled in. Um, it, 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 it wraps around and gives them a hug. It's suspended between two poles and when the, and the bait is put on the other side, the bird flies through and the net wraps around them. When this happens, there needs to be some sort of drag line to slow down the bird gently. This is different in today's. We're using a trap I've used this in some of my other videos. This is a uh, net system um, that is sold by Western Sporting Publications. It's a really good system where the poles themselves come apart and there's a bungee cord system that, that the whole net slides along and keeps them, uh, slows them down, but does so without having them uh, traveling very far. It's a very good system and you'll see this in this. So we put a lot of miles today. Prairie falcons love open country. That's uh, You've seen in some of my other videos where they nest. They are very much an open country bird and we put a lot of miles, went through two counties this afternoon trying to find them, but we did finally spot, well, we did find one earlier that we weren't sure if it was a peregrine or a prairie, but it had caught something and ravens drove it off so we didn't get a good look on that one. But finally we spotted the silhouette that was clearly a large falcon. We put out the Dogaza net in this case, uh, using a white net today. I'll have another video up in a few days talking about white nets versus black nets and setups. But use a white net, use a European starling as bait, and within less than a minute, we had a prairie falcon dive on through the net. Now watch closely and see what happens. The prairie falcon, as it dives through, you will notice, uh, compare this to, um, go back and watch my video on kestrels. Kestrels going through a Dogaza net and they go right at the prey. Notice that this prairie falcon is very high in the net. If the net wasn't there, he would have completely missed the starling. So why is he doing that? Well, this prairie falcon wants to slam. He want, If the starling's on the ground, he wants the starling to get scared, fly up, and hit him full speed in the air. But the starling is suspended down below. So the prairie falcon is trying to go like this and if the net wasn't there, would have kept doing this in hopes of spooking the starling up so he could hit him in the air. But of course, the starling was suspended and the net was there. And so the prairie falcon comes to a swift stop. Now we're dealing with a falcon that's all wrapped up like crazy. The, the net system from Western Sporting did its job. You can see it came apart properly. You can see that uh, those rings slid along the bungee cords and uh, did what they should. But now you have this tangled mess and in the center of it, you have an angry falcon. You have to be uh, cautious of the feet. You have to be cautious of the beak. And I did get bit several times in the process of untangling. But you want to untangle this bird as quickly as possible and reduce the stress level of the bird. So how do you do that? Well, there's those rings, these little rings that uh, the net, the four corners of the net, there's a lark's head knot to attach them. So you un, you un, well, you remove all four of those rings, and now you're just dealing with a net and a bird. Simple. Now, to try to get the bird untangled is actually a very straightforward process. When a bird goes in the net, its head goes through one of the squares, and as it's coming through the wrists, you know, a bird watcher would call it the shoulder when it's folded up, but it's technically a wrist, right? The wrists 
and the head have most likely gone through a hole and then the rest of the net has wrapped around them. Keep this in mind when you're trying to undo them. And then of course their feet are uh, tangled up, you know, grabbing the net. So normally what you want to do is get the, you know, is think of on reverse the direction that they came out of. So first get those wrists out. And once the wrists are out, uh, identify which square is around the head, pull that out. And then once you've done that, you're left with the feet. Usually that isn't that hard to undo. You just do it a talent at a time and they're free of the net. The prairie falcon that we trapped was not a passage bird, was not a first year bird. We only fly first year birds because adults, uh, they have a mate typically because birds of prey mate for life. So we don't in America typically, uh, well, we don't fly. Uh, you can fly a bird for multiple seasons into adulthood, but we don't trap and keep an adult raptor. How do we know this is uh, an adult prairie falcon or a haggard prairie falcon is the proper term? Well, there's a couple of clues. First of all, the feet and the eyes are yellow. You look around the eyes, the skin around the eyes, the sear, which is the fleshy part of skin around the nostrils and the feet themselves, they were all yellow. That's not 100% a guarantee that it's an adult. Usually it is. Usually they have pale, you know, whitish or bluish feet and skin their first year. And then as they reach adulthood at one year of age, those turn yellow. But depending on their diet in the wild, it is possible to have fairly yellow first year birds. So that's not a guarantee. So let's take a look at a couple of other things. Uh, if you look on the secondary feathers on the back, but especially on this bird on the secondaries, you'll notice some fairly well pronounced uh, bars on those. Usually a first year prairie does not have those bars. Not always a guarantee, but pretty, pretty, pretty much a guarantee, but much more of a dead giveaway. Let's look at these flank feathers. These are feathers on the side of the chest that sort of cover up where the legs are. And these uh, belly flank feathers, you'll notice, are very well striped or banded. In first-year birds, typically these are long, slender teardrops, chocolate brown teardrops. And then as they reach into adulthood, those look like really nice... Um, bars or bands and so all of these together indicate that this is a haggard bird we gave him a good look over uh, you know when it comes to coping I need to do a video on coping which is uh, trimming and sharpening beaks and talons of birds the interesting thing about coping is a lot of people say well don't wild birds ever have their beaks overgrown uh, and occasionally, yes, this bird's beak was a little overgrown. Normally by feeking, sharpening and cleaning their beak at the end of each uh, feeding session, they help keep that trimmed down. Uh, if I had have had some clippers, I would have just taken a little bit off, but uh, didn't have them with me. So, uh, But look at his feet. You look at the feet of a prairie falcon compared to a peregrine. This was a male but, and he was pretty good sized for a male prairie falcon that we see in Utah, but his feet are small and they're chunky for a falcon. Normally falcons are bird hunters, but prairie falcons do enough rodent hunting that it pays to have feet a little bit more built like a hawk. You know, shorter, thicker, that can withstand the bite of a rodent. That way they can hunt a more diverse range of prey in the harsh areas of desert without getting wounds too badly. And I did notice he did have a few bite marks on his feet from his dinner. So it was good experience trapping and uh, testing out this net system from Western Sporting. It's, it proved perfect. But again, this bird was not a first year bird. So we let him go and he was happy to be free turned around, went back up to the pole where originally trapped it, and uh, we went on our way. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. It's always good to um, see actually how a net system works, especially with uh, footage up close, and take the time to do that. Um, if you haven't already, hit subscribe on my channel. It really helps me grow this channel. And as always, happy hawking.